No, by now, by now you should have gone through all the other videos, and you're going to open up BotGuru Secured Folder. This is the actual software. When you first open it up, you're going to be presented uh, with the login details area for your license. It's going to download the support files and ask you for your name, email, and receipt number. This is going to be your name exactly as it is, case sensitive from PayPal, same with the email and your transaction number. Click OK. Tells you it's been successfully registered. Hit OK. And then the program will launch. When it first launches, it's going to ask you for config details. These are global settings that will save for you so that you don't have to enter it in every time. Set in your MySQL host, which is your IP to your MySQL database, your database username, password, database name, and table name. For the DB control panel, which is your web admin panel, put in your username and password here and put in the full path URL to where your web admin panel is located. To go ahead and log in or launch it to the login page, click on login and it will launch you off to your web admin panel. Put in your company name, your website name, whatever the case may be here, or it could be your name. Put in your website in any memo you'd like. This is going to compile with the publisher author details for all of your compiled bots. Now that we're into the main interface, to start your first project, you're going to choose a title, and we'll just say first software. You could add notes to it by clicking on next to your project title right here, and add notes for this project. You can store anything here that you'd like for your project. Put in your version number. We'll start this off with one. And these numbers go as 1.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, and so forth, up to whatever version you're using. It does not go 1.0, 0.1, and so forth. It is just a point and then whatever your number is. So if you wanted to drag out the number longer, it would be 1.01, and that would be your version number, or 1.001. Your app ID, you're going to store this as 001, is going to be our first app ID number. And it will auto change it, appending the AID to the beginning. Choose your EXE file in which you wish to protect. I'll just choose this here. Whether or not you want to auto run the program when it's opened. If it's a free or unlimited uh, use product, go ahead and check this box here. If it's a evaluation, demo, or license, click here. And if you want to send it as a demo with a limited amount of minutes to run, go ahead, click here, and enter in the amount of minutes, such as 30, to run it for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, it will present them with a license details login. This will prompt them to enter in license details or purchase your product. It will do this automatically and automatically upgrade your customer uh, to a licensed version. Trial number of days, you can put the number of days here before it expires. This does not run off the PC clock. It does check your web admin files to check for the actual date so that this way if they try and tamper with it, it will be blocked. Expire date, you could choose an actual expire date in which the software expires and click OK. Just by clicking over here, you can actually choose the date itself. If you want to choose, for instance, a different month, click on the month up here at the top, and this will give you the months throughout the year. If you need to click on a different year, such as instead of 2013, click on 2013, and we can go to a different year. We'll go here to 2014, and we'll choose July, and we'll go with the 17th and hit OK. Now, if you're issuing a license that you want it to be immediately registered without an evaluation period, click on your calendar, 
and we're going to go with the day before the actual date. So we're going to put this to the 16th and hit OK. That puts this over here to zero. Choose the base URL to your actual license files. This is where your web admin panel is without the trailing slash. So it'll be http colon mysite.com slash secure db. Your update URL. This is going to be the path to your update files. What I normally do is I use a folder on the server, whatever the case may be. It might be the application deployment folder. And it's underscore AID 001 slash, and I'm going to do updates without the trailing slash on it. Choose your output folder. We'll just choose the desktop here. Underneath PHP MySQL settings. Uh, most of this will be filled in if you went ahead and set your config at the beginning. If you did not set up your config, you can get back to it just by clicking this gearbox down here and launching the config window. Put in your details as needed. PayPal email address, your item number. For the item number, I always use the app ID number. It's a lot easier to track. So we're going to go with... 001 and if you've got multiple pricings you can list them here such as 25, 50, 75, 100, 150. Clickbank security key goes in here. Your eJunkie login email and password if you're using it and your download link goes here. The download link is where you're going to store the zip file. Once you've done this you can go over to the appearance tab you could choose a background image, click on the image, choose your background, and we do ship a backgrounds folder. So inside here we've got a bunch of different backgrounds that you could choose from. Open the software back up here. Now with some backgrounds your font doesn't look exactly right on it because it kind of blends in a little too much. So we've got our text color. Click on this tool right here and you could then choose the color that you want to change it to. This allows for it to stand out a little bit better. Underneath messages, you can detail the messages that will pop up for different errors that pop up in the program. Uh, this could be anything really, an internet check, update check, transaction ID, invalid, expired, whatever. Go ahead and click on default messages to get an idea how they'll show up. And this little tool right here, the squiggly lines, if you click that, it tells you different things that you can use inside these messages to show that information. So, for instance, we've got trial period for product title has expired. Please purchase a license to continue. We can click on preview and preview how that will actually come up. And you see, with project title, it shows up first software, which is the name of our software. Now that we've ran through all of this, we can go back here, we can save our project, and it'll save to our project name. If you're creating an update, click on Create Update, Change Log, and you could enter in the information that you're doing as a change. If you want to just use a general message, this little wizard tool right here, you could say it's a maintenance update, or it could even be your initial release hit save and that will produce the update and distribution files for you in your output folder. Once you've actually built the project and you've got your distribution files you can zip those up which should be to uh, the same download path as your, what your URL is here, and you'll upload it there through your FTP program or your Windows control. The update files will go inside your update folder on your server in the file name of your choice. When these files are created, you do not have to just call it update 
folder or whatever the case may be, you can choose the actual name of your updates folder and where you store your web admin folder and things like this. I do suggest that you name them specifically however you'd like them for your own security purposes. Changing them always helps to hire security and make sure that nobody can just access it without your knowledge. Thank you.